done right. Cinematography. Oh, thank you. Acting. What now? Writing. Thank you very much for that premise and you're paying it off. Oh, I'm loving it, loving it, loving it. Okay, we're talking about Outer Range, season two premiere. We just checked it out. Oh my goodness, we had not seen Outer Range before. I guess I'm a fan. The only thing I want to say about this is because it's the kind of thing that we don't usually watch because of the violence level, I don't know if I'm a fan that can be satiated by going back over and over again. I sort of want to, but I also feel like it's just taking on these gripping themes that pull me in, but it's doing so with really high stakes yeah. and violence met with those high stakes. Yeah. So that's my only reservation about this. The music is done well with the soundscape pulling us into the feelings of the characters, not pulling us out, giving us a nod to some of the different time periods they're moving through. Yeah. The concept breaks open all this wonderful writing where you have the Western and a lot of the big themes and struggles mm -hmm. for life and struggles for resources and trying to keep family together in harsh conditions. And then you have the time travel aspect, which you were saying deepens some of the themes of the Western, because right. you can then go back to some of the times where the beef started and right, the right. struggles began and then trace back even farther and farther and keep going back. The human drama is ever unfolding. This is well done in the acting, writing, with the music touches, just all the things that I'm looking around for. Oh, oh my yeah. goodness. Yeah. And it feels like it's tugging at me. And we don't even dive into that many dramas. Right. And this is making me think, oh, let's change that. Let's change it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. we have so much we want to talk about with it. And we've been talking about it as we were watching it. But I would like to know if you want to start off with the spiritual connection. concepts which are closely related, which is impermanence mm. and emptiness, um, coming from the Buddhist tradition. For those who aren't familiar, uh, emptiness is sort of like in the matrix, you know, where they have, you know, this, the, there is no spoon type of thing. Um, Got it. Okay. You know, things sort of exist and don't exist at the same time. Um, you know, you can, has, has relations to, you know, quantum physics and all this stuff. Um, but um, basically things don't exist the way we perceive them. perceive them, yeah. You know, impermanence is obvious, you know, it's pretty straightforward. Things don't exist forever. Mm -hmm. um, and that's sort of being played with here also. Um, yeah, time being fluid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, goodness, so this is a lot, a lot, lot of, of fun. A lot of good stuff, a lot of, you know, dramatic stuff, a lot of uh, heart-wrenching stuff. Yeah. Of, Yeah, something that was just coming to mind is it reminded me a little bit of uh, another Amazon show, um, Night Sky. And I haven't watched Night Sky. Right. Uh, it's. I mean, it's very different in in many aspects, but it just. Um, it's. Um, yeah. It just. It just sort of has. There's a sort of overlap in in the in the vibe of it. Um, sort of that they're, they're they really take their time, and with the scene and yeah. you know it's not rushed. It's everything is. It's just, you know, uh, intentional and yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, it's just, it's just, they take, they take the time to do it really well. It's interesting you talk about pace because mm -hmm. really I only notice that in the storytelling when there's something wrong with the pace, when it's right. a little rushed for a real emotional connection yeah, or yeah. when it's too slow for yeah. what they're really giving mm -hmm. you. So again, yeah. for the emotional connection. Yeah. If you don't give us time to let something hit us, right. then we feel like, well, well you just, opened up something interesting, screenwriters and actors, yeah, yeah. and then you didn't let it evolve in our hearts so we can really have it resonate with us. Yeah, you went too yeah, fast, yeah. or you milked that too long. It wasn't that big of a moment. Right, I didn't right. feel that way at all with any of the moments in this. Yeah, so it's interesting you yeah. pointed that out. I mean, with, with, with Night Sky, uh, the, the first thing that I noticed with that one was they gave it so much time, you know, mm -hmm. like the, these scenes, like at first I thought, oh my gosh, this is slow and this is, you know, boring, like, but pacing then, issue. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. then you realize, no, this is, that's, that's part of it. That's what they're trying to convey. The openness of the time. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. like the openness of the night sky. Then you yeah. see all this beauty and all right, these details. Right, if right. you give yourself this expanse of time. Right. Right. And, um, so it's interesting, you know, at first I thought it was something, but then you sort of realize, um, the, the pacing, you know, because it's not what you're used to. You're used yeah. to these 
fast action, yeah. cut, 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 cut. And uh, so, um, so yeah, that, that sort of reminded me a little bit of that, uh, how they give it, you know, not as much time, but they give, they give the scenes enough time to sort of let it sink in, let you sort of realize what's going on and stuff like yeah, that. So, that's yeah, that's excellence in editing, too. Yeah. Excellence yeah. in all the different departments and diff making yeah. the TV show. Just, but yeah. I think, though, it's making me think in this conversation, when you bring up the pacing, and I mm -hmm. haven't really thought about it before, it's making me think about how when we're watching things just from a perspective of enjoying it, right. if things are well done, you don't think about them at all. And right. that's one of the challenges with watching this yeah. is that I was getting pulled into it. I knew right, we were going right. to talk about it. Right, right, things right, were right. so well done. It's like, well, I don't have much to latch on to in terms of why is this not working? Right. Everything's working. Right, and right. so now I'm just like, oh, I'm caught up as a viewer and want to just keep binging yeah. and watching. So, okay, yeah. let's think about it a little bit differently because we want to have something to converse about and something for me to learn from yeah. Yeah. as an actor as a writer, as someone who does film, TV, music. But I'm just thinking, sometimes we just have to be honest. This was just satisfying why we go to storytelling. Right, it's right, letting you right. open up with themes in well-done ways, and then you're reflecting on your own life and your own inner journey more than watching the craft and it's so heavily in your face that this is what's done. No, this is seamlessly done that you can be swept up in the storytelling. Mm -hmm. But part of it is, I think, too, as we're having these conversations, I think it's probably great for us to let these conversations go wherever the piece of art takes us. So if sometimes we're just more swept up into fangirling and fanboying about it, that should be fine because that's right. part of why we do these things is to be inspired. And if the inspiration just hits us that this whole thing is just hard to analyze because we're just swept up in it, then let's yeah. just be real about that. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I think I did want to, though, mention that I was listening out for some of the music because we mm -hmm. hadn't been watching so many dramas. Yeah. Watching other styles of things, the storytelling here with a drama that's well done is getting you in its own rhythm. And I liked it a lot. And I really appreciated the use of music judiciously because mm -hmm. then at the end of the season two finale, you're giving us this landing of who are these characters that I didn't know who they were, these younger versions of right, right. your Josh Brolin character, a Boyle Abbott and Cecilia CC, right. who was played by Lily Taylor in the current time right. that we were seeing them earlier. And we did, I did not know that's who we were dealing with mm -hmm. when we were first watching this. And I think that it might've been something that I just assumed was because we hadn't watched season one. Right, it right, might've right. actually been something where, Everyone was figuring this out together, right, right. and only at the very end, the reveal, at the uh, wrap up of the finale, did we actually land this. Like, yeah, who are yeah. you? Who am I speaking to? Yeah, you know, yeah. What's going on? So that might have like, been something that people just didn't know. Like all viewers were figuring it out as we right, were. Right, right. And like you were saying at the at the end, um, you know, it was it was probably you know around the time of the 60s or whatever when yeah, you know they played 60s, the, pink, the pink floyd song yeah and what was the name of the song they played right it was time and i was just like oh that's a fitting song because of the, the yeah. title but then you were like oh but it's probably from that era when the song came out also and i, I think like, they're trying oh, to yeah. signal yeah so both it's both, it's both. yeah, yeah. yeah. So and i'm not sure well 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 done then. yeah it definitely mm -hmm. conveyed to me not current music. right 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 and so even if the year is not perfect right I think they're trying to nod that we're, yeah, yeah. we're in, cementing. In mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Because when you have these different timelines, that's one of the things you don't want to confuse the people too much. When it's the 1800s and a lot of people's yeah. dress and ways to be are so different, it's right. a little bit easier. But yeah, then yeah, if yeah. it's modern time, right, right, right. and especially when you're in this place where you have in modern time people wearing clothes that are been worn maybe for right, 30, right, 40 right, years, the right, style of clothes right. is like older still style clothes. Jeans, still, still wear jeans. wearing those uniforms, the sheriff's office, yeah, 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 like yeah, sort right, of right, similar. Right, right. And the trucks they got, these busted trucks that are running <laughs> well, around. Yeah, so you, yeah, you see yeah. some of these things out there for 40 years. So yeah. give us another hint as right, to right. what time we're in. So the music was signifying mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the mood at that right. moment right. and that we're okay, we're launching into this journey, y'all. Right. It's just gonna be exciting. Let's get hyped up for season two yeah. to unfold, but also, locate us and help us keep track of things right. i like it like it so with the acting oh my goodness just knowing the heavy hitters that you have involved with this should make everybody feel like okay this is a show to check out got your josh brolin playing royal abbott pivotal character and then there's lots of people i don't know the work of imogen poots that well but she's playing autumn rivers who may be also another relative here that she's coming in as this adult character but she may be 
through a different timeline and then plop down later on uh, Royal Abbott's granddaughter. We will see <clears throat> right, Amy right. maybe. So oh, there's just so much to enjoy. But somebody like Lily Taylor, who's playing CC yeah. Cecilia Abbott in the current timeline, I see her all over the place. People probably are huge fans of hers, but I just keep seeing her as somebody whose face I see in so many great projects. Mm -hmm. And she's constantly giving me something really solid, good. And I remember, not her name, and maybe it's because her name is more of a common kind of a name, Lily Taylor, but my goodness, mm -hmm. I gotta just say, when I saw her, I was like, oh, she's good, she's good. Mm -hmm. And then I wanted to go through our little list here and I don't know Sean Sipos, Sipos who's playing Luke Tillerson. Mm -hmm. He was given a lot to do oh, yeah, he was in great. terms of someone who was just experiencing the time travel yeah, yeah, by yeah, his yeah, own yeah, intention. He yeah. thought he knew that that's what was going on. I, I gather that's what the character was doing. Yeah, yeah. And so He's, he was given a lot to play with. Yeah, and it's, it's it, interesting looking at his name because I... Looking at his face, I was like, "Oh, I must have seen him before. I must, I must know his I name." Have. I don't, I don't know and then, him. And I'm like, "I've never heard that name before." I, I don't know but that I've probably, actor. I've probably seen him in something else. I'm just not knowing his name. Well, maybe he's getting a real but, big moment here. Yeah, also, this yeah. might be something where yeah, we're yeah. really getting another level of exposure for this actor. Yeah, yeah. I really, Good I, on I, him. I really like him. He's he's doing a great yeah. job. Yeah, he was able to be a part of like us getting introduced to how does all this feel and work because mm -hmm. he's traveling through their time travel portal yeah, kind yeah, of yeah, thing yeah, and yeah. then just sort of coming out in this visceral way of feeling all this pain and having this dude's orientation and right, hearing right. voices and right. oh it's just so well done to put mm -hmm, us mm -hmm. in this yeah, it's good. feeling of the time travel yeah. and then have him then thrown into okay where are we now what's going on with my dad he's not right, in the right. last state that i knew him in my brother what's happening so yeah, 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 when yeah. we are disoriented as viewers then characters who are also trying to find which way is up, let us feel like they're feeling. Right, so right. we're riding along with his character. I wanted to scoot on down to say, loving breaking open, not just the work of Tamara Podemski, who's playing Sheriff, Deputy Sheriff Joy. Mm -hmm. I'm not only wanting to call out that she just made us feel like, oh, we drop in the 1800s now. Which way is up? What's mm -hmm. that? Is that arrow for me? That's, that that arrow is not for me. Right, okay, y'all right, not right, trying right, to kill right. me. Oh, you're not. Now you're trying to kill me now. Yeah, yeah. Who, which way? Okay, her survival skills dropped back in the 1800s mm -hmm. on point, and we were just watching her do her combat, saying, okay, well, just a regular schmegula person thrown into 1800s, I would be dead, dead, right. dead, dead, multiple times dead. Right. But she's got her hand-to-hand -hand combat training from being law enforcement. And she's got her native people proudly knowing some skills and language. So she got some survival instinct and skills on display. Yeah. I don't I know think, her I work her, a lot, yeah. but she was working that role. Seems like her language was the, the biggest survival skill. At the end. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. because nobody asked her anything when somebody came up and tried to kill her. Right, right. That's so right, yeah. at first, arrows were flying and they weren't meant for her. Right. Then, right. <laughs> then there was a sneak attack coming up. And I said to you when I saw it, I said, well, that's real. Yeah, because yeah, nobody yeah. says, oh my, what are you doing here? Let's have some, no, I'm just, yeah, yeah, yeah. you are the ops. Right, right, right. And I see you, you don't right. see me, so I'm up on you. Right, <laughs> that's right, what right. that was. Yeah. And it was chilling. Yeah. Because there was so much disorientation with how she was experienced in the melee going on between two different tribes or two different groups. They might have been the same tribe, just in inner conflict. True, true, true. But these groups were clashing. I said, what's going on? And you had to tell me, uh, it's not about her. They're just beefing with yeah, each yeah, other. And I was yeah, like, yeah. okay, because I don't know. And she was looking around like, what happened? Yeah, I'm yeah. in with her feeling yeah. like, what's going on? So she had another way for us to feel that disorientation when what we think of as linear time is thrown around and we yeah, end up someplace yeah. we didn't think we we're gonna be. Yeah, oh, it yeah. was so great. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well well done. Just just throwing us curveballs yeah. all the time. Yeah. Because we didn't ride through the first season, the storylines that we had with um the character of Maria Olivares Olivares, played by Isabel Ariza. Ariza. So the character of Maria. And then she's, I guess, taking off with maybe the character of Perry Abbott. No, Rhett Abbott, the character of Rhett, Rhett Abbott. Yeah, yeah, I think so. so 
we were picking up and we just did not watch season one. And so they're taking some time with these characters to have a softer connection. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that is the only place where I was saying, okay, well, there's something that we're missing here about who these characters have been and how long it's taken them to find each other and just break off from what's keeping them apart. And so I think if I had been in with this longer, taking the time to see them end up at the CD motel somewhere where they're on the road and, you know, meet these cats and have this Rhett Abbott character sort of be on edge about these cats. And just like that sort of fun and light. And it was just a bit different than the other um, scenes that we we're seeing. And it was yeah. a good contrast, but I just didn't appreciate it as much because we weren't coming in with knowing Maria and knowing Rhett mm -hmm, and how mm -hmm. long they have been trying to figure out yeah, yeah, that they yeah. wanted each other. I did love and continue to want to mention not just the main characters, but also the side characters, these little moments from people just giving mm. you like the CD motel yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, clerk or the owner who was at the right, front right, desk right. anyway. Right, right, right. He was great just sort of mm -hmm. saying, honey, do you want to be with him? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that yeah. was a cute moment. Yeah. And it wasn't done over the top. It's like somebody who's a lived in kind of real person giving you their quirky side character thing but it was done not with over the top quirky so yeah, yeah, yeah. people are giving these great moments and another one came from the doctor who i guess oh, yeah. we were seeing him interact yeah, dr iwahori played by mark daughtry mm -hmm. interact with um the uh main characters coming royal. to the hospital royal mm -hmm. abbott and then autumn who might be amy right, right, abbott right, right, right. or amy in the future right. so well, the doctor was basically trying to do this kind of like he, this person is coming in with trauma is the person who brought her in right. the cause of the trauma in part. So the doctor was aware of the big stampede at the end of season one, but also right. saying there's also other reasons that people are in. Right, right, it's right. the stampede and other reasons. Mm -hmm. And the way he was broaching that had so much quiet confidence mm -hmm. when he sort of checked Royal, like, well, I'm in the listening, but I'm not trying to hear you right now. Mm -hmm. I'm listening mm -hmm. here. And, and the way he did it just to me spoke of this character's lived in this character knows what this community is and what kind of drama happens and he still has power in his role and is going to stand up and say the thing that needs to be said without it being overwritten right. that little right. moment of a doctor would do this kind of check now doctors out there are going to tell us they probably try to get this guy out the room before right, they right, did right, that right, 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 <laughs> but right. this will still be done yeah, and yeah. i guess because we're talking about screenwriting you got to have the stakes and the drama there yeah, you yeah. leave them in the room right, when, right, right, really right. in terms of realism right you probably wouldn't do it right then yeah, yeah. but in terms of quiet confidence and power absolutely woo, yeah. just check off the list because physically he was you know smaller than than yeah. the other guy. So, you but know. he has the duty of care Absolutely. standing behind him and the sense yeah. of like, I yeah. got to advocate for this person who's hurt. Right. That's a part of what right. I have to do and I'm standing my power yeah. without it even being too aggressive. It was just, yeah. He's like, this, you is, pause my, this you. is my house. You know? yeah. And it was done with, this is my house. Yeah, yeah. Just like a statement of fact. Right, 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 right. Woo. Go, doctor. Mm -hmm. It just made me feel that um, the writing gave him room to play that in a way that reflected quiet power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With so many guns in these westerns and so much, you know, knives and you have, you have the knives and the guns and the arrows and all this scary stuff just flying at you. How right. about the guy in the coat says, no. No. Just, it goes this way right mm -hmm. now. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciated uh, it. I also liked the... Um... Uh, Deputy Matt. Yes! Um, Played by Matt Mayhar. Mayor? Matthew Mayhar, yeah. Matthew Mayhar. Or May Mayor. So, Matthew's uh, anyway. playing Deputy Matt. Yeah, and uh, so, yeah, he has a way of speaking that yeah. is different, you know. Right, do we call it a speech impediment? Right, We're right. not that sure. Right. But I'm loving that because you have diverse casting, you're allowing us to have our well, what does that mean? Where does that come from? Right. It gets us thinking about the reality of the world. Exactly. And exactly. how do people then judge somebody right. who presents in this way? Are right. we supposed to think he's undervalued? Are we supposed to know, mm -hmm. you know, a certain thing about him because of that? Or is it just everyday life? Like right, everybody right, out here, right. everyday life, like my hands are different. It mm -hmm. doesn't end up being mm -hmm. something that's a big plot point for like right, characters. Right, right, I'm right, like, right. Like, so maybe for, different. Everybody has something. Yeah, you know, pretty so, much. Yeah. yeah. So, but I loved it because 
it was not something we hear all the time. Right, exactly. And we can understand him very fine yeah, and very yeah, yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, and so, yeah, yeah. yes, make your money, uh, Matt. Right. You know, right, playing right. Deputy Matt. Right. But it also pro brought in these other things of because we're not getting cookie cutter, everybody looks the same. It has us thinking about, well, what is that like for him to move through the world mm -hmm, mm -hmm, in this world? So mm -hmm. it opens up real considerations. Yeah. And I like that too. Yeah, yeah. I think we could probably go on and on and on because we didn't get a lot from the character of Martha Hawk played by Morningstar Angeline, but she still had a moment oh, yeah, where yeah, she's yeah. waking up yeah. to what's going on and where are people right, and what's right. happening. Right, right. I wanted to say getting representation of native storyline is huge mm -hmm. for this, this whole work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm wondering how well is it done for those who are native out there, for those who are first nations mm. people, let us know because me being African American, you being white, mm -hmm. we're not people who are as sensitive. I mean, I have had some experience trying to learn and get myself aware mm -hmm. to be culturally competent, but it's not my history. Right. It's American history. Mm -hmm. And this is not my community, although want to be an ally. Let us know if it's being done well, because my thought is when you have a lot in the storyline and a lot of different people yeah. who are embodying these characters as actors, hopefully their input is being put right, in. There's right. probably some people in those writers' rooms, if they're having that many characters right, in this day right, and age right. who are native characters, my thought is you got consultations and you probably have some writers in there, but let me know if that's being done mm -hmm, because it mm -hmm. looks like it's being done well, but it wasn't given as much time. I will say there was a pause and we were talking about the power dynamics of it when Cecilia Abbott came in, guns drawn to right, a space right. that two native men were sort of controlling and right. operating. And I was like, they're sort of used to being hassled because they weren't like, oh, gun, gun, gun. Right, it was the right, white right. women coming out of the sweat lodge that they were doing that were like, oh, that's a gun. And I was like, see, that's because they're used to being hassled. I just perceived right, that as right, like, right, right, right. you are in this space that your people have been in for a long time, mm -hmm. but y'all used to be in hassle for hundreds of years. Right, so a white right. person comes in with a gun, you're just like, okay, can we just not die today? Right, right. As opposed to, <laughs> I've never thought this could happen to me. It's like, no, mm -hmm. no. You've been told this could happen to you. Yeah, and yeah, I don't yeah. know that specific history right. of Cecilia with those particular native men. Mm. It's just, I read it as, okay, I'm coding that as brown men know, uh, okay, mm -hmm. let's figure this out to live another day. Right. And I'm missing a lot. I am, I know. But it also played as true to me, just not even knowing who these particular characters were and how Cecilia was coming on an effort to you know put her family back together right but still the way i looked at that was like she's having the privilege of her white skin to come into that space and pull that gun into all that i was like yeah ooh, 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 ooh. yeah but also just having the privilege of having that gun right there is the other thing but then who's allowed to who's allowed to walk in to have a gun and not have everybody in the swat team and everybody call and and just pounce on you so people have to run around and be armed and some of us if we're walking down the street mm -hmm. and somebody thinks oh you just shouldn't be here that's enough of you being a threat mm -hmm. so she can walk around that community right. being armed right we can get into a big conversation <laughs> because i think that's what this show is doing yeah. maybe it's that we don't watch a lot of dramas and talk about a lot of dramas but this show is bringing up things about are we handling native history well mm -hmm. is it being rendered I'm going to say accurately based on what people have figured out and know. Yeah. Is it being this is this story now being told by hashtag own voices or the people in the writers rooms who come from these communities? I'm not saying necessarily Shoshone specifically, but I'm saying native First Nations, some kind of way to connect. I mean, if it could be Shoshone people, that'd be even better because then you're really imbuing this with specificity and that's got to shine through in all stories and deepen them so that's what i would love to know from folks out there because i i was like okay i gotta frame this to say that i know i'm not the expert voice in this but i also know that i want to know if people are doing it well so let some experts come and tell yeah, us yeah 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 that'd be great that'd be great um i definitely would love to to know because it looks like it's being done well but if we're wrong yeah. we want to be great wanna... to get some comments uh yeah let that. us know about that yeah, yeah. So we went through a lot of the uh, acting and just said with the people who were involved that we knew the work of, we thought, oh, it's going to be great. And yeah, the acting is great. We okay. went through a bit with the music and I wanted to make sure we really do pause and say 
the conceit they're working on, the premise they have, such a chef's kiss. It's setting up all the opportunity for the writing to be done so well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The overlap of the Western with time travel mm -hmm. lets us explore these deeper issues. And I think that is what drives so much of what can be great is just is the concept breaking open things in a unique way. Because we've heard lots of beautiful stories being decades on this planet and educated and given cultural exposure to beautiful, timeless, wonderful stories. Give us something in a combination that's different so we can deepen our life experience in a way that we haven't before, yeah, yeah, or not yeah. a lot, anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that is just so profound, like mm -hmm. just a great idea. And then as somebody who I think I've been blessed to have some good ideas, but didn't have the experience yet to bring it all together, hats off to people who have the structure of the pacing of mm -hmm. these scenes, yeah. understanding how yeah. to unfold the mystery of who are these characters to each other? What is the time travel mm -hmm. rule? What are the rules for how the time yeah. travel yeah. works? Yeah. Yeah. And then how are we going to be bopping around between all these different groups of people over time? Yeah. Oh, I think they pulled that off really well to say nod to and pick up from end of season one, set up and open up out to season two. Ooh, y'all, mm -hmm. when the Wayne character was coming through with his sons and talking to Royal, it was like, Hatfields and McCoy's about to go down. Mm -hmm. This is like mm -hmm. epic clash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't even, there's probably other things that are being set up that I didn't even appreciate, but that was really getting laid out. I wanted to try to get the name of that actor because he is amazing and has been in so many things as well. I'm going to have to pull out to get that Which because one? the one who played the Wayne, uh, Wayne character, yeah, who was confronting in the hospital when Royal had taken uh, Autumn to the hospital. And then that's the father oh, of the, Billy, uh, the Tillerson. Yeah, uh, oh, sorry, one. Will yeah. Will Patton. Yeah. Wayne Tillerson. Wayne Tillerson. Right, right. Right. So, uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's going to be on, y'all. Mm -hmm. And Will Patton just brings it, brings it, brings it, brings it. Not that all these other characters are not being played by people who also oh, bring it. They yeah, do. Yeah. But just when you see him in some, oh, it's going to be good. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> He's going to help make it good. Mm -hmm. So, I think I had a good time talking about the acting. The writing, well, the that, music. Yeah, I mean, that also leads to the casting, and that's a huge part oh, of it. Oh, huge! <laughs> it's all, uh, often uh, uh, under, under... Appreciated. Appreciated, yeah. Indeed. Um, I mean, you see all these great actors here, you know, it's yeah. like, uh, who's responsible for that? Yeah, the casting, casting directors, directors. Yeah. exactly. So, Hats yeah. off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so it's just, it's just well done all around. You know, music, oh, directing, goodness. cinematography, casting, all, all writing, it's beautiful. All, everything. It's beautiful. Yeah. The touches they're doing with the cinematography to evoke the time travel, like yeah. you say, yeah, yeah. the time lapse kind mm -hmm. of right. movement of the stars across the night sky. Right. Oh, gorgeous. Right. I just feel like we're just definitely inspired by this as a holistic piece of storytelling, getting into thoughts about what is the larger plan, what's your larger destiny, how are things meant to come together, mm -hmm. then toward the end, okay, the future's coming, we got to stop it. Okay, how do you stop the yeah. future? But aren't we constantly trying to do that right. very thing right. in our regular lives right. thinking right. ahead and trying to steer things so our families don't come to disaster and hopefully thrive right and oh, it's, uh, you know it just brings to mind uh, you know the concept of being present you know in the present mm -hmm. moment we are always wanting to you know think, think ahead of, think about the past or oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. or think about the future you know and how yeah. how often are we thinking about the present moment you know, yeah. and uh, being present. Being I'm present. thinking about just being yeah, just present. Being present, right, exactly. Mm -hmm. And um, so this this sort of exemplifies how you know we as humans sort of long fixate. long yeah, fixate, yeah. Long, long for, you know, f let's fix the past. Let's go in the past and fix things or let's uh, you know go in the future and, and prevent things and you know, but in reality you can just be present and uh, you know yeah. It's profound. It's, yeah. it's profound and it's simple. And it makes so much sense once you know that. But right. because we set up so much about learning from our past, right. we think, okay, that's hugely important to learn from the past. It right. is. Right. Right. But then sometimes when hurt, when we're dealing with these big generational traumas, especially, yeah. and you're yeah. unpacking it and trying to understand it, yeah. ooh, it's hard not to get stuck back there. It's really yeah. difficult. Yeah. And some of my own writing, I'm like, Absolutely. okay, let me make sure I try to encourage us to right. acknowledge and then not get stuck back there. Because right. I right. do some of the writing that has time yeah. being thought about and moved around in non-traditional ways yeah. in some of my pieces. Yeah. And I put that nod there. So let's not get stuck 
stuck with it, take it forward to where we are now so we can make profound changes and open up other possibilities. I don't know if this story is as hopeful as maybe some of my pieces are, mm -hmm. but it's so well done and it has mm -hmm. an intent and you know they are trying to talk about bigger things about being alive. And I think we crave that as right, viewers. Right. I'm thinking ahead about how we're going to be connecting to other dramas coming up. I think Fire Country is having a season finale coming up and I think we're going to check that out and mm -hmm. it should be probably a way for overlapping some themes since it's another drama. A lot of the other things we've talked about have been quirky dramas like Elsbeth or right, just straight up right, comedy. Right, right. You know, so I think this is going to be a good thing for us to delve into the space that is given to a drama, yeah. a little bit more time for storytelling, and also just the nod of why do we go to these dramatic things mm -hmm. is to get to know these characters more, at least the kinds of dramas that we're into. Mm -hmm, They're mm -hmm. really focused on characters more. Even though this is doing genre and genre, this meaning outer range mm -hmm. is doing western and it's doing sci-fi mm -hmm. it's really doing characters it's serving Absolutely. characters yeah, 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 yeah. really yeah. well i yeah. think yeah. let us know if you agree comment like and subscribe definitely let us know about some of the things we asked about before but also let us know if there are other shows out there that you think you'd like us to dive into because we yeah. like it too if you're inspired we can be inspired and this thing keeps rolling forward y'all yeah. take care bye